EXS's main parameter window contains the controls for programming EXS instruments. Like most samplers, EXS's layout follows the traditional subtractive synthesis layout. A harmonically rich, complex sound source, in this case the key map of audio samples, is run through a filter, most commonly a low-pass filter, to shape the tone and an amplifier section to control volume. This is the audio signal path, shown here in blue. The audio and these sound modifiers can then be controlled or modulated by control sources, or modulators, shown here in red. Standard ADSR envelope generators modulate the filter and amplifier to shape the volume and tone, respectively, of each note over time. The attack and decay parameters control the initial attack and drop-off, sustain sets the level and tone of each note as it's being held down, and release determines the time it takes for the note to die away in level and tone after the key is let up. LFOs, low frequency oscillators, are subsonic oscillators that can be applied to various parameters. Typical applications include LFO to pitch to simulate musical vibrato, and LFO to amplifier to simulate musical tremolo. They can be also used to generate special effects as well. All of these sound modifiers and modulators can be set to work automatically or be controlled in real time by the performer from note velocity or a variety of keyboard wheels, sliders, and pedals, and other MIDI control devices. There are also so called global parameters which affect aspects like overall polyphony and performance mode. And the modulation matrix strip running across the center of the parameter window allows additional modulation routings, enabling almost any parameter to be controlled by any modulator, internal and external. Now, some samplers have a full independent set of these parameters for each individual key zone or group. In EXS, though, they apply to all zones, to the entire key map though EXS does allow you to offset the values of some parameters on a per-group basis in the instrument editor window. Now this has always been one of EXS's biggest limitations. Many instruments, like drum kits for example, need to have different settings for different key zones for the different drum and cymbal samples that make up a full drum kit. There have always been workarounds, but in the past they involved using multiple instances of EXS in different channel strips and elaborate programming in Logic's MIDI environment, not for the faint of heart. But since Logic 10 introduced track stacks in the patch format, multiple instances of EXS can now be combined into a single instrument much more easily, finally eliminating this major limitation. I cover that in detail in tutorial 25. For the majority of instruments, however, a single set of parameters with occasional group offsets is fine. In the next few videos, I'll go over each section in turn. Filter, amplifier, envelopes, LFOs, global settings, and the modulation matrix strip, starting next time with the pitch parameters.